Hi, I'm Black Dragon, and welcome to another edition of Black Dragon Biker News Network. Biker news you can trust. And as always, we'd like to thank you all for tuning in from wherever it is in the world that you happen to be. This is ugly. I'll just you know, dive right into this. This is uh, ugly. Um, the cute little kid that never hurt a soul uh, is becoming unraveled. The, the, the truth behind the cute little kid. And I, I don't understand what kind of privilege he was living under because um, uh, this guy here, uh, as it is unrolling, these, these seven Marines and supporters of the Jarheads MC absolutely uh, did not have to die. They, they absolutely um, should not be dead. They, the, the state failed them. Many agencies failed them. Uh, and, and this kid living this spiraling life. We're, we're going to check out this video first. And after we check out this video, I'll have a little something to tell you. Uh, and this video is going to unveil some of the things. <laughs> Let me just show the video and then we'll, we'll, we'll move from there. Go ahead and roll that. Of Volodymyr Zukoski, the driver is accused of slamming his pickup truck into this pack of motorcyclists, killing seven. He will face a judge a little later on this afternoon here at the Coas County Superior Courthouse. But I am just getting some new information out of the state of Texas that this accident that claims so many lives was not his first major accident this month. On June 3rd in Baytown, Texas, Lieutenant Steve Doris tells me that Zukoski rolled an 18-wheeler that he was driving there on Interstate 10, loaded with five cars. Thankfully, no one was injured in that big accident. Zukoski claiming at that point in time, telling police that he had been cut off by another car. And then same town there in Texas a few months earlier in February, Zukovsky was arrested at a local Denny's. Uh, a per it was, there was a report of a person acting intoxicated. Police arrested him there at that restaurant and found a crack pipe in his pocket. Uh, sadly, uh, not the only case of his run-ins with the law. The 23-year-old agreed yesterday when he was in a Massachusetts courtroom to be brought back here to the Granite State to ultimately face those seven counts of negligent homicide for the major accident that occurred here last Friday. Records and reports that reveal a swath of arrests from driving over the influence dating back to 2013 to possession of drug par paraphernalia. Uh, just last month, Zukowski was arrested on May 11th outside of a Walmart in East Windsor, Connecticut. A police report saying he was revving his truck engine, jumping around, acting erratically outside of that vehicle. The police officer suspected he was under the influence, and based on his performance during a field sobriety test, he was arrested and charged then with operating a motor vehicle under the influence of drugs or alcohol. Due to his suicidal comments, extreme behavior, he was turned over to medics and ultimately transported to a hospital. The victims in this accident in New Hampshire, ranging from a 42-year-old mom to a 62-year-old retired police officer and court bailiff, they were members or supporters of the Jarheads MC, a motorcycle club that included Marines and their spouses. A GoFundMe page has already raised over $400,000. The medical examiner determining that all seven of those victims died of blunt trauma. Today's arraignment is slated for 1.30 this afternoon. Zukowski will appear via a video conference, meaning he will still be in jail, but will appear before the judge uh, via camera, essentially. Vladimir, Vladimir, Vladimir. This is, this is just absolutely crazy. Arrest after arrest after arrest. This man could play the system, and he was good at it. Um, he, he could play the system and, um, he, <laughs> he played it well. It, it's sad. And you see the guy, he looks like a clean cut kid. And I think that's what gets him over time after time after time again, until he murders seven people, uh, excuse me, involuntary, uh, what was it? Negligent homicide. And you can just see a downward spiral in a life. And we saw this happening in the military about 1995 or so. We, we could see this happening as these kids were coming in. This is the generation of 
we can't tell you no. This is the generation of when we took prayer out of schools. And when nobody could fail a grade and nobody could be held back and nobody could get an F on a test. Where nobody could be spanked and have your, 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 your ass warmed up by a paddle. When parents could come into classes and cuss out teachers for uh, disciplining their children. Where even if a parent spanked a kid, hit a kid, or damn near killed a kid, like I damn near got killed when I was a kid. Now we're putting parents in, in jail. These kids come from the days of when we stop holding kids responsible. We could see it coming in the Navy as we were putting these kinds of undisciplined, undisciplinable people behind the controls of multi-billion dollar submarines. We could see this generation of folks coming driving behind the wheel of an 18 wheeler with 50, 60, 70 tons of, of uh, cargo, thousands and thousands of pounds of cargo rolling down the road and you're fiddling with drugs and alcohol and speed and crack pipes. You don't get arrested you don't get, you know, you playing the system. I'm not going to take a blood and alcohol test. Playing the system for all it's worth. And you, 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 we, 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 we saw it coming. This is the, 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 the time of you can do anything you want. Hey, uh, if I don't want to use the, little boy's bathroom, I'll go to the little girl's bathroom. You can do whatever you want. We don't have to pray in school. We have taken the accountability systems that made this country pretty great. It was okay to get a spanking when I was a kid. Everybody could spank your ass. And I mean everybody. Principal, next door neighbor, the Wilsons down the street, Colonel Stinnett across the street. That Colonel Stinnett could whip my butt. The Wilsons down the street and around the corner. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Stewart on the corner down there. Any one of them could snatch you up and, 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 and beat the hell out of you. And you would beg them, please just beat me. Whatever you do, don't tell my mother that you had to beat me because she's not going to understand that and I'm going to get massacred and I'll just take your beating and save the massacre because I'm going to be, I won't be alive. Uh, I can remember the, you, you, you remember the Rock'em Sock'em robots? I can remember getting whipped with the Rock'em Sock'em robot ring. It was made out of vinyl. It made a good belt. Hot Wheels tracks. You ever had your butt beat with Hot Wheels tracks? The principal used to have a try-me board. I went to B.C. Sweeney in Lawton, Oklahoma. I don't even know if that's school's around anymore. Went to B.C. Sweeney. Principal, I come out, there was a man, what was his name? Oh, my goodness, I forget his name. Sixth grade teacher. It beat the hell out of you. My seventh grade teacher, drama teacher, Mr. McCarthy, I think his name was. We, we all thought he was a little sissy. One day we messed around in class so bad, this cat bent, <laughs> he bent one of them cats over to hit him with that. He hit him so hard, the high school principal, I mean, or the high school uh, coach, the tough guy, the big six foot eight guy, the coach winced. He hit that guy so car so hard, the coach winced. Me and my friend Garland Davis, he looked at us, it's your time. I said, oh, hell no, I'm taking a suspension. I'm going home. My mama didn't play that. 
taking a suspension. She came up to that school. You ain't taking no damn suspension. You taking them swats. I said, man, I can't get, I can't take no swats from Mr. McCarthy, man. That ain't happening. Uh, Y'all might as well kill me. Uh, he and, and, and he hit the guy. The guy stood up and not a tear dropped out of his eye. He just collapsed. I said, I, man, I can't take no, no, uh, uh, I ain't crazy. No, hell no. <laughs> they wound up. The principal had to spank me and Garland. <laughs> we were cowards. I wasn't taking that. But I had to. I had to take some licks from somebody. I would rather have taken them from the high school. And Mr. McCarthy was just mad because we'd been messing with him all year. We thought he was a little sissy. He was mad. Black Dragon. Of course, I wouldn't call Black Dragon then, but oh, John Bunch, I'm going to kill you. Uh, and we believed it. And, and that was the era of accountability. We don't have accountability now. All you got to do is look good, look the part, play the role, a little tie and tight Marine cut. They took him to a, uh, I don't know, some sort of hospital rather than his butt to jail. Because he was making suicidal statements. <sighs> Got all these people killed. And a lady lost her $143,000 a year job. $143,800 a year job. When we let these people get away with stuff, when, when, it, when they finally crashed, not only do they kill people and ruin families, they cost a lady her job. The head of the RMV, not sure what the RMV is here. They'll say it here. I'll try to find it. Lost her job over this moron. As a matter of fact, before I read that to you, let's just go ahead and uh, roll the tape. I think we yeah, roll that clip. Randy, good morning to both of you. This morning, the state is promising answers and changes in the wake of that devastating crash. Now, the Mass RMV is right in the middle of all this. Mass dot says the driver charged in the collision that killed seven motorcyclists in Randolph, New Hampshire, never should have been on the road. That's because the RMV missed information shared by Connecticut authorities about Volodymyr Zukovsky's drunk driving arrest there last month. Because he allegedly refused a breathalyzer test, his license should have been suspended here in Massachusetts. Last night, RMV Registrar Aaron Devaney resigned amid the fallout. Transportation Secretary Stephanie Pollack released a statement saying in part that there will be a, quote, in-depth review of the registry state-to-state -state data sharing processes to ensure the RMV acts as quickly as possible on any information shared by other states. Meantime, friends and family continue to mourn the seven people who were killed in that crash. There will be a vigil and a fundraiser tonight at the, it's going to be at the VFW held in Whitman at 5 p.m. We're live in Boston. Josh Brogadier, WCVB. So I hate the way these guys do this. They tell the story and they don't always like tell everything. I guess they're stretched for time. I get a little bit more time to concentrate on the story. But the head of the uh, Massachusetts Motor Vehicle Division resigned from her reported six-figure salary gig, they say, Tuesday after her agency failed to terminate the commercial driving license of a man accused of colliding with a group of motorcyclists on a rural New Hampshire road last week, leaving seven bikers dead. How in the hell could this be her fault? She didn't turn the man loose and all those things. Um, but her agency failed. And when I was in the Navy, if the captain was asleep and somebody ran the boat aground, the, the captain would be gone before the guy who ran the boat aground. You have a little officer, did, did we didn't know what the hell he was doing, uh, failure in life, run the boat aground. But hey, captain, you should have trained him better. So I guess she's got to fall on her sword because... Someone in her organization screwed up. Yeah. And so that's why when you are in a position of leader, you, leadership, and I have a, on my vest, when I was national president, I had national president, all that stuff over here. And over here I had a big old yellow uh, 
past that said leadership sucks. And this is when and how and where and why leadership sucks. It's great when everything's going good, but when things go bad, leadership sucks. The Massachusetts Registry of Motor Vehicles. Now, that's what RMV stands for. Registry of Motor Vehicles. Her her name was uh, Air, is Erin Debonet. Offered her resignation just hours after the alleged driver involved in the horrific crash pleaded not guilty to seven counts of negligent homicide on Friday. So the failure is blamed on her agency. There's a lot of failures here to go around. There should be a whole lot of people turning in resignations, if you ask me. Uh, her agency failed to act on information received in May from the Connecticut Department of Motor Vehicles about a drunken driving arrest involving the 20-year-old suspect, Vladimir Zukowski, Massachusetts Department of Transportation Secretary and CEO Stephanie Pollock said in a statement, Pollock said the previous arrest should have cost Zukowski his commercial driver's license, driving license. As a result, she accepted the resignation of DuVernay. You know, somebody's always got to fall on a sword. Somebody's always got to fall down. And um, she was the, the sacrificial lamb here. DuVernay, whose salary was reported $143,800. So... They're paying you that much. You need to be on top of things. Court documents allege Zukowski, a Ukrainian national with a permanent resident status in the U.S., was driving erratically. And why wasn't his permanent resident status um, dissolved after the first DUI? I mean, we're sending, uh, we got big old walls down at the border uh, stopping people from coming in. We got a Mom and a little uh, a man and his daughter laying dead in the water down there, while this cat's breaking laws left and right. But 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 he gets to stay. He gets to stay with an arrest record as long as my arm. But he gets to stay. Driving erratically, crossed the center line at six thirty and on a two lane highway. So we're learning more and more. He was driving erratically. Across the line, two-lane roadway in a small town just north of Mount Washington. His Dodge, pickup, his Dodge pickup truck was towing a flatbed trailer. We know all of this. It's just so much tragedy. Plowed on the bikers. All of the victims were members and supporters of the Marine Jarheads, a uh, New England motorcycle club. And killed those very fine heroes. He was previously arrested the same week as we heard. And he was arrested in a Walmart parking lot in East Windsor, allegedly failing a sobriety test. But his license was not revoked after that arrest. But in 2013, his license was taken away for 210 days, almost a year. He was placed on probation following a drunken driving charge. Drugs. Cars, they don't mix, people. Drugs, 18-wheelers, they don't mix, people. This guy's plying his living on the road, and God knows how many people came close to dying. Police in Texas told several media outlets that Zukowski also crashed a tractor trailer. A tractor trailer is an 18-wheeler, and those things have weight on them. In suburban Houston earlier this month, Zukowski told police that he had been cut off causing him to lose control of the truck. So he wasn't charged for anything in that. But how did this uh, woman lose her license? Well, it says so in this, this article. How did she lose her job? It says so in this article right here. Um, he, uh, uh, this is a new article that uh, was written by WCVB5. I think that's a Massachusetts channel. The truck driver in char in, uh, involved in the crash, 23-year-old Vladimir Zukowski of West Springfield. Five investigates reports that Zukowski has a history of driving under the influence and license suspensions. So I always thought, because, you know, my 18-wheeler and truck driver friends and hotshot driver friends, 
man, they get mad at us when we're speeding on motorcycles. Oh, man, I can't speed on this. Man, no, man, we, we can't go so fast. I'll lose my license to drive. I won't be able to make a living, Black Dragon. You guys got to slow down. Obviously not. You can obviously drive any damn way you feel like it. We need to just be on the road just to riding. Up there. According to Pollock, the Massachusetts RMV did not act on information provided by the Connecticut Department of Motor Vehicles. But there's a little more to this story. It ain't that they just didn't act. The May 11th incident that should have triggered the termination of Zuccotti's commercial driver's license, they didn't act on that. Former Massachusetts DOT Chief Operating Officer, DOT is uh, Department of Transportation, James Tesler will likely take over as acting register of the RMV. Pollock said Tesler will lead an in-depth interview or in-depth review of the registry state-to-state -state data sharing process to ensure the RMV acts as quickly as possible on any information shared by other states. He said the loss of life in any motor vehicle crash is a terrible tragedy, and the massive toll this crash is taking on the families of the seven individuals who lost their lives, many of whom served this country, is impossible to comprehend. The Massachusetts Registry of Motor Vehicles has a responsibility to enforce laws governing safe operation of vehicles and carries out its mission to the best of its abilities. And the best of its abilities is kind of what happened here because the best of its abilities weren't good enough. And there's a reason. Sikorsky received a Massachusetts personal driving license April 25th, 2013 and received a Class A license or a CDL. That's uh, what we call them around here, which is a commercial driver's license on August 3rd, 2018. So five years after he got his license, he got a CDL. His driving record includes a violation for operating under the influence of liquor on June 26, 2013. A disposition for that violation on June 16, 2013. He served suspensions and attended education classes where he obviously didn't get educated for the violations including a youth alcohol program. This guy, since he was under the age of 21 at the time, this guy's been a lush for a minute. And instead of putting, you know, him in jail, we've been doing things, a youth alcohol program and this, that, and the other. We have failed terribly until this train wreck destroyed countless lives. Zukowski's driving record history did not have the number and type of violations that would have disqualified him under the state and federal law from him obtaining a Massachusetts CDL in 2018. Uh, I wonder why not. Why didn't it have a driving history that would disqualify him? That's interesting. On May 11, 2019, Zukowski received violations for an alleged OUI. And I've now, one of my, one of my, uh, 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 subscribers told me what an OUI was. We call them DUIs down here. Uh, they call them OUIs, operating under the influence incident and refusing a chemical test. Refused a chemical test on May 11, 2019. Now, in California or here in Georgia or other places that I lived, if you refuse a uh, drug or, or if you refuse a test drug or or uh, blood or urine test, whatever they do. If you refuse that, you just automatically lose your license. I think in California, it's for a year or something like that. Um, and I said I used to be a traffic instructor in California. I think it was for like a year or something. You just, bye bye license. You refuse the test. We're not going to hold you down and take it. We're just, driving is a privilege here. You're just going to lose your license to drive. When an incident occurs out of state, the state provides information to the Massachusetts RMV to trigger a series of state and federal guidelines regarding license suspensions or revocations for various uh, types of licenses. The refusal of a chemical, um, refusal of a chemical test results in automatic termination. So why didn't that happen? The OUI incident would automatically trigger a seven day notification process for the suspension of his non-commercial license in accordance with Massachusetts law. 
the Massachusetts RMV's knowledge, to the uh, Massachusetts RMV's knowledge, the Connecticut DMV failed to provide sufficient information. Uh-oh. So this is why she lost her job. To the Massachusetts RMV's knowledge, the Connecticut DMV failed to provide sufficient information through the federal CDL system upon his OUI offense on May 11 and refusal of the chemical test for the violations to automatically apply to his Massachusetts driving record. A notification from the federal CDL system would have resulted in an immediate termination of his CDL. So that's why her office missed it. The Massachusetts office missed it because the Connecticut office failed. So old girl didn't just, just fall down on the job. She didn't get the right notification. So I wonder if that means the, uh, the Connecticut uh, equivalent of her is going to step down too. Uh, but she wasn't off the hook just because she didn't get the right notification. On May 29th, the Connecticut DMV sent a message to the Massachusetts RMV through the American Association of Motor Vehicle Administrators. Never knew this existed. The state-to-state -state messaging system for registries regarding Zukowski's OUI on May 11th. The message did not contain sufficient information to automatically input his OUI into the Massachusetts driving record. So they still didn't get the right information. And therefore, this did not automatically trigger the seven-day notification process for his non-commercial license suspension in accordance with Massachusetts law. So while the Massachusetts while the Massachusetts RMV system could not automatically process the message, it generated a notification for manual review. And this is where it all fell. This is where it further fell down. The manual review had not been performed by the RMV personnel as of June 23rd, which is why the May 11th chemical test refusal does not appear on Zukowski's driving record and why his license had not been suspended. It was a perfect storm of missed opportunities and failures in the system, all the way from his juvenile days of getting drunk and getting high and and school teachers and and principals and counselors and guidance counselors and police security people, a whole infrastructure of people that we put together to stop these folks from failing through the cracks from falling through the cracks, failed. And so did the education systems and the drug rehabilitation systems and all of that, that failed. And then the licensing processes that would have kept them from getting these licenses all together, they failed. And the systems that show who shouldn't be driving and who should and what should be listed and what shouldn't, that failed. And his own personal whatever that you should have on the inside of you that says, I am spiraling down and I need help. And if I don't help myself, I'm going to kill somebody. That failed. And all of that failed before the Connecticut and Massachusetts DMVs failed. The folks who hired this guy Somebody said, well, how's this guy driving for you with all this? I, look, dude, he had a license. There's nothing on his license that said he couldn't drive. He had a he had a wreck last month, but last week, but somebody cut him off. And all these indicators are being missed. And now we have several Marines dead and the supporters of their motorcycle club, the Jarheads and C. And what are we supposed to think here? How do we get those lives back? What kind of privileged system did this cat live in? But it's a system of breakdowns that are starting at the school level. 
Or you can't spank nobody. You can't give nobody an F on a test. This is what you get, people. This is what you get. And these are the folks that will be flying your airplanes and fighting in your military. Yeah, we better get right. You know, there was a time when there was accountability. You could get your rear end handed to you. And folks that was handing it to you wasn't a whistling Dixie. And these families are destroyed. And these heroes are gone. Our brothers in arms. And sisters. And God bless that lady who saw all that mess coming and rolled off her motorcycle. Don't feel bad, sister. God wasn't ready for you yet. No survivor's remorse for you. Just know that you survived for a reason and find out what that reason was and live your best life moving forward if you weren't doing so already. So anyway, um, we're probably going to find out more damaging, hurtful stuff about this guy. Be ready. It's going to suck. Be ready to um, have your feelings hurt even more. 400 people went to, uh, to uh, and you can read that in Biker liberty.com wrote that story yesterday 400 people went to go see him off and uh pay tribute to him the page they set up for him uh, has made over four hundred thousand dollars the page that i set up i was gonna send to them i'm shut that page down and so pointing everybody to them so that uh they can continue to prepare themselves to help out financially and all those other things that they have to do. And I promise you, they're going through hell over there. So when you see them, don't ask them a bunch of damn questions. Just love on them. Show your respects. And uh, afford them a level of um, uh, respect, honor. Treat, treat someone like you'd want to be treated if you were facing that same horrendous tragedy. So, uh, that's my uh, what I have to say on this. We'd let us know what you think about this story in the comment sections below. Um, you can um, check us out. We're we're on it every day. Sometimes a couple times a day. New content comes out every day. Some of you guys are saying that you're not getting my uh, notifications. Uh, there's something to do with the notifications. You need to go look at them again and make sure you select it all. And there's several levels of notifications. And so you need to go into those notifications and check them all. Check us out on our Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter pages. We want to build those pages up. So please check us out on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. I'd love it if you guys could help me get those numbers up as well. And uh, please check out our ways to support the channel with PayPal and um, uh, 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 Patreon and Cash App. We appreciate that as well. And uh, we got gear now. T-shirts and whatnot. BlackDragonsGear.com BlackDragonsGear.com Check us out on Biker Liberty where you can uh, read these stories that we talk about. And uh, if you don't want to read them, they also talk to you. You just hit the button if you're driving and the story will read itself. New technology. And we have uh, the Dragon's Lair Motorcycle Chaos, our podcast, where you can hear these and other stories. So we'd just like to thank you for tuning in. That's my two cents. Thanks for tuning in and get skinny.